Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am your host, connoisseur of nothing, expert in unopinionated on most. And today, uh, for my YouTube listeners, I know it's been a while since you last seen me. Life has been busy, a lot of changes, a lot of new things to come. I've um, also been focusing a lot of time and energy on my podcast, which I'm going to be bringing that over. I think I've mentioned that in a previous video. I don't know, it's been so long since I put out a video but yeah so a lot of content will be coming on that and it won't be video more so audio but give you some of my perspectives you know in a better light uh, some of the content on the page will be changing and for you guys watching on my social media y'all know me but um what I want to talk about is um the cost of a life you know um, over the course of last year, you know, not only have we seen a lot of life be lost, whether that be, you know, due to the pandemic, just natural cause deaths, um, whether that be to, you know, celebrities like Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, you know, many others, DMX, you know, whether it be, you know, gun violence, police brutality, many different things, many, many different reasons as to why lives have been lost and why lives are lost every other day. This year is nothing special. Happens all the time. Um, one of the things that, that has transpired over the course of this last year is there's a lot of new gun owners. And I'm a fairly new gun owner myself. I've only been, you know, shooting guns and own my own guns for the last couple of years now, but... Before, before you really purchase a gun, um, there's a conversation that you should have with yourself. And, you know, before I got into guns, I had also did combat training. And how my combat training started off, wasn't getting in shape, wasn't on push-ups, wasn't doing jumping jacks, running, none of that. It started off with a conversation. Right? And the conversation that was had was two things, two points. Point A. You know, if it came down to it, would you be willing to bite off another man's genitalia to survive? Sounds crazy. This is something that you need to think about. Because... People die in fights every day, people. You know, petty fights over nothing. Or petty fights that are actually over something, but something marginal in the grand scheme of things. You know, how many things are really worth the cost of a life? Right? So, your life is precious. It's the only one you're going to get. So, we all initially, just reactively, are going to say yes. Yes, we would, you know, do whatever it takes to survive. But you really need to ask yourself that and come to terms with that. That's something you need to figure out now rather than try to figure it out. Somebody's dog almost got on me. Rather than try to figure it out in the heat of the moment where seconds feel like hours and life is going to be lost within a split of a second. So, come to terms with that. The second is, whenever you do take somebody's life, what is it you're actually doing? Who is it affecting? This also ties into the first question. But, if, if me and somebody get into an altercation and they pigeonhole me into a position where I have no choice but to, to my, but to defend myself to the extreme. All other options are gone. I try getting away. I try to avoid the situation. I try to calm the person down, calm myself down, come to some sort of resolution. All my attempts have failed. Now it's go time. If they kill me 
or if I kill them, the consequences are still the same. You know, I may be reason why, you know, a daughter never comes home and hugs her father from school again. Whenever she's lost and she needs guidance, or she's never going to have that option, or a son is never going to have that option. A partner, a, a wife, a girlfriend. Nobody's going to be there to hug her in, in, in her times of need. Nobody's going to be there to help build the life of her dreams that, that was discussed between her and that gentleman. Right? A mother's never going to be able to cook a meal for her son again. You know? Never going to be seen at a holiday again. Maybe a picture on the wall that they put on the top of the fireplace. You know, as a placeholder for them. That's what you're doing. You're, 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 they're not going to feel anything. They're gone. They're not going to be here anymore. And I apologize for the background noise. I want to go for a walk. I might drive so much. I hardly ever get to walk, so I want to go ahead and get a little walk in. Eat a nectarine. This is good. Is this nectarine is an apricot? I think it's nectarine. Very good. But, yeah, they're, they're not. The price that they pay is grand but the effects of that action is not going to be felt by them they're gone unless you believe in the afterlife if you believe in the afterlife then yeah they'll know what happened and, and be looking down you know reflecting on their lives decisions and their mistakes and everything like that but really the people who are here are going to feel that pain the most so whenever you go in and you buy your gun to defend yourself with and absolutely I want I want you all to I think everybody a sound mind should be able to purchase a firearm to defend themselves granted if somebody is real mentally disturbed maybe not maybe not you know because there, there can be certain consequences of that but it's same certain consequences can be had with somebody of sound mind body and soul but I digress. Consider this. And make sure that you are truly willing to remove somebody's existence from this earth, if need be. Because you don't want to be in a position where you're fearful, you go for your gun, you never even thought about having to kill somebody. The idea never really even crossed your mind in a real way. You know? And you may freeze. You may not want to kill them. Because it's a grand thing that you're doing. And they may take that off you and kill you. Or worse. You know? So. Be mindful of that. And. Better yet. Don't let the. Don't let the firearm be the only. Security that you have. It's just a piece. That firearm should be the center of the security that you have around your home where you rest your head at where you're your most vulnerable where your kids are at where your wife is at where your husband's at if your parents live there where your parents are at anybody everything that's most dear to you is there so what you should do is build layers layers and, and bubbles around your home of security you know, make sure you got locks on as many doors as possible and not the good locks not the sturdy locks make sure that you have a security system if you can afford it security systems are getting cheaper and cheaper every year it doesn't cost that much to go ahead and get you some security systems in place they're a deterrent make sure you got a very sturdy Locking system on your front and back door. Same as your windows. Also, do routine checks every day. Make sure everything's locked up before you go to bed. These are things that we often forget, overlook, because we're so comfortable in life. We're not expecting anything to really happen. But shit happens. And shit happens fast. And oftentimes, we're not expecting it. And you don't have any time to get prepared. So, do the preparation. Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. Understand what I'm saying? get a dog you know dogs are lovable creatures loyal creatures beautiful creatures and they'll also 
help protect you, take care of you, let you know when something's going on, and help defend your life. You know, build these rings of security around what's most precious to you, which is your life. Don't just let that gun be the only thing, right? So, also remember, take the, you, you, if you did buy a gun already, if you did, take the time, practice, practice, practice. Put some money away so you can invest in some training, get you some basic classes, and then keep saving up, get you some more advanced classes, you know, whatever your budget allows you to afford. I know pretty much everything whenever it comes to firearms is expensive. There's not many things that are cheap, especially with what's going on right now with the ammo. Ammo's starting to go down, but still, still expensive. Still very expensive to go ahead and go shooting. I understand that. You know, I'm in the same boat as y'all. So, with that being said, uh, that's, all, that's all I got for y'all tonight. Um, for my YouTube subscribers, how's it going? It's been a while. Uh, it's good to see y'all. hope y'all happy to see me. I'm going to be starting to drop some more content on there as well, I promise you. And um, for everybody else that that's watching on my social medias, uh, you got any questions, feel free, inbox me, uh, DM me, whatever. I'm not a whole person to talk to. I like talking to people, informing people. If we're actually talking about something of substance, talking about some bullshit, I'll probably lose interest pretty fast. But that's all I'm checking out. All right, y'all. Peace.